All right, in this video, we're going to talk about um, solving equations that involve square roots. Um, the idea that you use on these, you can actually use to solve cube roots, fourth roots, um, and other roots as well. So here's the basic outline on what to do. Um, the first thing you're going to do is isolate a square root. If there's only one square root, or whatever type of root it is, you'll get that by itself. If it's a square root, you'll square both sides. If it's a cube root, you would cube both sides, etc. Um, assuming there's maybe more than one root, you're going to keep isolating whatever roots are left until um, you're going to isolate the roots and then square the, everything until all the roots are gone. You'll solve that resulting equation and then check your solutions. So let's illustrate this with a couple examples. So suppose I want to solve square root of x plus 5 plus 1 equal to x. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is get my square root all by itself. So I've got square root of x plus 5. I'll do that by simply subtracting 1 from both sides. And now I'm going to do just like I said, now that I have my square root isolated, I'm going to simply square both sides. So remember, if you square a square root, you simply get what's underneath the square root. And let's be careful with our x minus 1 squared. Remember, we have to foil that out completely. So on the left side, I'm just left with my x plus 5. He's just chilling out. If I distribute, I'm going to get x squared, I'll get minus x, another minus x, and then a positive 1. So let's keep simplifying. On the right side, I'm going to have x squared minus 2x plus 1. And now we have to solve this resulting equation. So notice here that the highest power is 2. There's an x equals 1, and there's also an x equals 1 on the first side, but this is a quadratic equation. So remember with quadratic equations, you set them equal to 0, and then either try to factor, or use the quadratic formula, um, complete the square. So I'm going to subtract x, and I'm also going to subtract 5 from both sides. So I'll make the left side equal to 0, and then on the right side I'll get x squared minus 3x, well, positive 1 minus 5 is negative 4. And again, you could use the quadratic formula or any other thing, but it looks like to me this is going to factor. I believe this factors as x minus 4, x plus 1. And now we set simply each piece equal to 0, and we get our solutions of x equals 4 and x equals negative 1. And I should say potential solutions because these are simply solutions to the quadratic equation. So this is where number 5 comes back in. We have to check our solutions. All right, so here was the original equation. We said that maybe 4 works, maybe negative 1 works. Maybe they both work. Um, sometimes they both will, sometimes neither one of them will. So now, let's see, let's check... Let's check the positive one first. We'll check x equals 4. So if I plug that in, I'll get square root of 4 plus 5 plus 1. And I'm wondering, does that equal 4 when I plug that in for x? And yeah, it looks like it's going to. I'm going to get 4 plus 5, which is 9. The square root of 9 is going to be 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. So yes, in fact, this value does work. So that's a solution. And then we can also check our other value of negative 1. So if we check x equals negative 1, it looks like we're going to get underneath the radical. So again, I plug negative 1 in, plus 5, plus 1, and I'm wondering, well, does that equal negative 1? Well, let's see, underneath the square root, we're going to get 4, the square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Well, 3 definitely doesn't equal negative 1. So this solution actually doesn't work. So our only solution in this case is going to be x equals 4. 
we call x equals negative 1 an extraneous solution. Okay, So it does work for the quadratic equation. That's where it came from in the first place. But we have to remember you know, the original problem we were doing. So x equals 4 is going to be our only solution in this case. So let's do one more here. Suppose we have square root of x equals square root of x minus 5 plus 1. And now we've got two square roots present. Okay. So if you look back at my recipe, it says the first thing you should do is isolate a square root, which, well, we've already got one on the left isolated. And once you have that, you're going to square both sides. So if I square square root, I'll get x. Well, on the right side, I have to remember this is really square root of x, plus, x minus 5 plus 1 times square root of x minus 5 plus 1. If I FOIL it out, I'll get a square root of x minus 5 times the square root of x minus 5, which simply gives me square root of, or excuse me, just x minus 5. I'll also get a positive square root of x minus 5. I'll get another positive square root of x minus 5. And then I'll get a positive 1 times a positive 1, which will give me a positive 1. Okay, so let's collect our like terms. x is just hanging out on the right. I've got an x here. Notice I have negative 5 plus 1. That's going to give me negative 4. I have one square root of x minus 5. I have another square root of x minus 5. I have two square roots of x minus 5. And now my goal again is to get this square root all by itself and I'll repeat the earlier process. I'll simply square both sides. So notice if I subtract x from both sides and if I add 4 to both sides, the x's are going to cancel out on the left side, but I will be left with a positive 4. Then I'll have that's equal to 2 times square root of x minus 5. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And I'll have 4 over 2, which is 2, equals square root of x minus 5. Now I'm going to square both sides. Square both sides. Well, 2 squared is going to simply give me 4. Again, if you square a square root, you get what's underneath, which is x minus 5. If I add 5 to both sides, I'll get 9 equals x. So again, I have to be careful and go back and plug this in. So my original equation was square root of x equals square root of x minus 5 plus 1. But now I'm going to plug in this value of 9 for x, 9 for x. So remember, here is our original equation before we squared everything. So I'm plugging it all in here. Well, the square root of 9 is 3. Underneath the radical, I'm going to get the square root of 9 minus 5, which is the square root of 4, which is 2. And 2 plus 1, hey, that is 3. So it looks like our value of 9 equal to x is, in fact, a solution of this equation. So in this case, we had square roots, and we were squaring both sides. But again, if you had a cube root, you would do the same thing. You would isolate the cube roots, and you would cube both sides instead. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, if you're checking this out on YouTube, probably the best way to catch me is to send me an email um, via YouTube on my account. Also feel free to take a look at my website. I've got links to just tons and tons of free math videos. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. If I can sort them out, um, I'll be happy to. The more specific your question, um, the more specific my answers can be. So be detailed and I'll be happy to get to them.